Hello everyone, back to Tudy in to today's spur video. We're going to have a look at the weather next day to 14 days for today's spur video, day 10, we'll take to the 15th of July, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with its OCFS and ECM ensembles where we want to round a couple of weeks. So have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video. It's four weeks that will get us into the uh, end of July, actually. So I'll get on that view in a moment, although it's going to be on the chance, a possibility, no more than that, of some really hot weather around the middle part of the month. But at the moment, a lot of uncertainty about it. I'll talk through all of the data in a second. Uh, just say, first video today was the 6 a.m. upload, and we've also released the EC 30 day slash 6 week talk here for the UK average for Europe too. So check out those two videos if you liked about. Please like, share, subscribe on this. Thank you so much for doing that. The you know, live stream last night is absolutely lovely. So thank you so much to everybody for the last night's lovely, lovely uh, live stream. Okay, so that video then. Uh, so just we talked about the live stream last night, just to confirm the section temperature for June is uh, in, and it came in yesterday at 14.9, which is 0.8 of a degree uh, above average, so not too far from long-term averages. It was the smallest uh, anomaly to average since January. Uh, Sheep Apple also came in at 0.8 of a degree above average at 4.7. Of course, in between, have had some very warm months, February 3 degrees above average, March over 2 degrees, April over 1 degree, May nearly 2 degrees above average, and then we get June, which uh, it is still a little bit above average, let's not forget, but closer to average. July has had quite a cool start, starting off at 14.5 for the first three days provisional, which is one and a half degrees above average. If you get hot weather coming along, though, uh, that is going to absolutely rock it. So we'll wait and see about that, of course. How does that fit in? How does that June CT fit in? Historically, this is CT page at the UK, going way back to 1659, of course. So, um, next number for um, June 2021 at 14.9. Uh, so, 20, uh, June 2021, so at 14.9. So, June 2021 and 2020 was actually warmer at 14.5, 14.3. But, yeah, I'd go back to 2019 for a, a cooler June. That one came in at 14.2. And then, of course, I had a very hot June in 2018 at 16.1. I think that's hottest since 1976. 2017 was also a very hot June at 16.0. And the last time we had like quite a cold June was 2015 at 13.9. June CT comes in under under 14 degrees, and that's quite a chilly month. Um, 2012 and 2013 also uh, quite cool, 13.5 and 13.6 respectively. So, uh, yeah, you know, a little bit above average, nothing uh, overly dramatic, though, uh, during June. We wait to see what happens in July. I think we'll probably do CT Saturday on uh, on Saturday. And um, we'll have a look at uh, CT data for July uh, uh, then. So that'll be coming up for you on Saturday. Right, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Uh, from last night's 18Z to start to start, so red line for London, uh, so red line spreadsheet, upper air temperature average for London, so I'm a little bit below average, upper air temperature at the moment, but they are going to be lifting up, getting warmer as you go through the middle part of the month. I'm showing you this because um, you can see there with that thick green line that the GFS operational run on last night's uh, pub run, 18Z, actually went off the scale again i will show you it a little bit later on in the video but it was a very very hot 18 z indeed this is how the midnight uh, gfs ensembles are looking so the operational run didn't take off and you know uh, go up the scale but it did become quite hot briefly just there you see from that thick green line and several uh ensemble members going hotter than that actually above 20 degrees I know it's only quite a quick sort of cool down though, once we get beyond sort of the middle part of the month. But um, starting off like a little bit below average, then closer to our show next few days, then warming up later uh, uh, during the weekend, early next week, becoming quite hot, potentially late next week before things start cooling down. It's getting very, very dry until like the middle of the month. There may be a bit of a fungi breakdown. And then the 6 7 looks like that. Uh, so again, we see the GFS operational run absolutely taking off and going off a scale very briefly. There it is, just there, that thick green line that goes to 25 degrees at 850 hp. There's a drill going off outside my windows. I'm just going to close the windows. Hang on, everybody. Okay, there we go. Window closed. Right, where were we? Yeah, but 6 there. 
Again, taking off and going off the scale with the upper air temperatures going to 25 degrees or more at 850 kPa. Only very briefly, but it is, you know, very, very notable. But it's doing that once again. Many of these GFS ensemble members with 6 air suite are becoming really hot as well. Certainly going to or above 20 degrees at 850 kPa. You can clearly see that there is a warming trend next week which is where we're starting off at and uh, obviously temperatures looking up so the question is how hot will it get you know through through um the stages of next week but certainly around the middle part of july there's a prospect that we could turn it really quite hot we've got to wait and see you know what happens with this um there are still some cooler on top of them down here but they're diminishing actually uh, i think so um Maybe the prospect of some very hot weather around the part of July is grand. But let's wait and see, you know. I don't want to alarm anybody at this stage. Because there will be people who are quite worried about this, you know. If it gets, like, to 40 degrees in terms of the temperature, then people will be very, very worried about that. So I don't want to alarm anybody. And let's just wait and see what happens. Things will settle down over the next few days. Um, Stage-wise, again, loads and loads and loads of dry weather over the next week, 10 days, maybe a little bit more showery, perhaps thundery even, into the second half of the month. We'll have to wait and see about that. Temperature anomalies from the 5th to 13th of July above average. It's going to be a warmer than average week coming up, and that's before any sort of heat spike, really, that might happen. And precipitation anomalies from the 5th to 13th of July, drier than normal, very significantly so. They just went from that from Earth. North School dot next shows that we're pull, still pulling in wind from off the Atlantic today, so temperatures are relatively modest today, still bring wind from off the Atlantic Ocean, but high pressure is taking over. That's the centre of the high pressure there, and that's extending in and will be setting us down over the coming days. Right, so this is how the UK Met Euro is looking for Friday. High pressure bridging in from off the Atlantic. That high pressure will be in control of weather there right the way through to this time next week. Ridge extending in from the Atlantic. Nothing excessively hot up to that point. Warming up, yes, so temperatures by... by so the burn next week might be into the upper 20s or low 30s Celsius in the south. So yes, it will be warming up, but nothing excessively hot up to that point like uh, Tuesday uh, next week. Uh, right, where do we go to next? We go there. I can't, looking like that, with risk of high pressure again building in from off the Atlantic. We have to be lots of dry, warm weather with it over the coming days. That carries on to a part of next week too, particularly in the south. Temperatures will be warming up. Again, nothing excessively hot up to this point, but certainly because it's very warm, uh, see from the upper air temperatures, we're in, in, going to be like drawing up um, temperatures, upper air temperatures between 10 and 15 degrees at 850 kPa, which will get temperature up to the upper 20s, if not below 30s Celsius. That's as far as we get to with ICON to midday on the 12th. Right, the GFS runs then. So we're going to start off with uh, the pub run, last night's 18Z. And again, we know it's going to get very hot. This is how it happens. High pressure bridging in from off the Atlantic over weekend into next week. Bringing lots of dry, warm, very warm weather. Not excessively hot up to this point. That high pressure sticks around the country as we go into the middle of next week. And then by the weekend of 16th, 17th of July, that high pressure begins to break. So some of the ridge begins to drift eastwards. And that, with the ridge drifting eastwards, allows the heat to start pushing up from the south. Here it comes, winds turning into the south on the 17th of July. Extreme heat across France with a plus 20 or 25 cells ice firm there through the Bay of Biscay and into France as well. And then that heat pushes further northwards from the 17th into the 18th, albeit it very quickly is becoming unstable and volatile with low pressure developing, triggered by that heat and the temperature contrast between the Atlantic, which of course is much cooler, and that extreme heat drifting north across the west of Europe, that begins to generate low pressure. So very quickly, this starts turning thundery and breaks down. But look at that, 6 a.m. on the 18th of July, yes, we have got a 25 Celsius iceberg sitting there across um, the southeastern part of the country. That would be record-breakingly hot. And uh, plus 20 Celsius iceberg is making it up into some parts of Scotland. That is very, very extreme heat. Very quickly, by the 19th of July, that's being swept away as that fungi low then uh, pushes eastwards and uh, takes probably smoke storms eastwards with it and then introduces cooler air from off the Atlantic along with these westy winds. So it is, again, only a very brief heat spike, but it is a very, very 
extreme heat spike that we see there on the Jeffers A7. Let's have a temperature uh, forecast looks with that 18 cent run. So, uh, this is 6 a.m. on Sunday, 17th of July. Remember, this is all very extreme range, though, so don't be too alarmed about this, okay? So, it probably won't verify. But it's, it's for posterity more than anything else. You know, these are absolutely historic charts that we're seeing at the moment from, from the GFS. So, it needs to be recorded and, you know, we need to have it there to look back on. But don't be overly alarmed at this point. We're still seeing this, like, with... Um, five or six days to go, <laughs> then we can start worrying. But at the moment, you know, it's 300 hours away, so it's a long, 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 long way out beyond day 10. Anyway, 6 a.m. forecast, 17th of July. Uh, already temperatures around 23, 24 degrees. Absolutely insane. Um, that's how the temperature looks by uh, 6 o'clock in the evening on the 17th of July. So approaching 40 degrees, uh, really actually at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we do get to 40 degrees in the cell on that 18Z run. So yeah, we've got like 40, 41 there along the M4 corridor from Bristol to London. You know, that's where the higher temperatures are. But even further north, you know, we're record breaking hot, 39 degrees, for example, into South Midlands and whatnot. Look how extremely hot it is over France into the low countries uh, as well. Absolutely incredible. Um, that is uh, 3 a.m. temperature, so the 18th of July. I've never seen anything like that. So at 3 a.m., the pub run was forecasting temperatures to still be at or above 30 degrees. The UK transported to um, to like Tunisia or, or Morocco or somewhere like that. Absolutely extraordinary. I've never seen that ever. You know, I've never seen the 40 degrees either. So these are really historic charts that the GFS is churning out at the moment. Of course, we get the fundamental breakdown on the 18th of July, so the heat sort of gets squeezed off to the east. But another extremely hot day before that fundamental breakdown sets in on Monday, the 18th, temperature again approaching 40 degrees across these east areas, turning cooler out to the west. Welcome, welcome relief. And that heat, you know, getting swept away as we go through the 18th, probably via some big thunderstorms. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's historic what we see there, absolutely historic, but it probably won't verify. I do have to keep emphasizing that because people will be very alarmed about this. Um, and it probably won't verify, but, you know, while the GFS keeps flirting with this, we do have to consider it as a possibility, I guess. Um, the midnight GFS run, again, with high pressure sending in from off the Atlantic on Friday, that high pressure dominates the weather through the weekend and into the OPAD next week as well. Not excessively hot at that point, but getting warmer, of course, under that area of high pressure as the week uh, progresses at day 10, still with that ridge maintained across the country. Um, to be on that 16th of July, Fungi Low Bay starts trundling up from Biscay. That does bring some pretty hot air with it, but the hot air never really gets in that fungi low kind of tea or the extreme hot air never really gets in the dangerously hot air never really gets in that fungi low just keeps it at bay ever so slightly um so a little bit more toned down with the gfs big dike run but kind of in the same going in the same direction anyway bit of a heat spike or, or a proper heat spike and uh, a little bit more thunder revo that's how we look by the time we get to the end of the gfs big dike run so first july we're back into those western winds looking mainly dry but very warm and then this is the six there which again we know is going to have a heat spike uh, again so let's see how that happens uh again the high pressure reaching in from the azores on friday into the weekend high pressure sits over the top of the coach being lots of dry warm or very warm weather with it also high pressure beginning to break a little bit and retreat a little bit by the middle of next week but then it kind of starts to come back uh the ridge begins to reform by thursday the 14th you can see that it looks extremely hot down across Spain and Portugal. So very extreme heat there. Just beginning to push northwards in towards parts of France uh, as well. And there we go, 15th of July. Uh, the high pressure when the seas will break seas. Uh, we break off the ridge and we pull up that hot southern wind. All bit again, it's becoming volatile very quickly. There's a fungi low out to our west and around Biscay. But we do pull up some very extreme Upper air temperatures, yeah, with that GFS, uh, with that GFS, uh, uh, 6-head run. Uh, so, uh, 25 Celsius run, again, is into the southeastern corner there on the 15th of July this time, not 17th, 15th, a couple of days earlier. Um, but it is very volatile, so, uh, fungi low being generated by that 
heat and humidity and that very quickly had a cold front that's, uh, with that so there'll be a cold front through there and um, by the end of the 15th of July it's all over like it's only like a one day wonder really and then we're back into those cooler winds from off the Atlantic very very trivial what we have what we've had, I've had most summer since 2015 with these brief heat spikes but this one could be <coughs> excuse me excuse me <coughs> This one could be a very extreme heat spike. Eventually, we go into something rather fresher and, um, you know, showering from off the Atlantic Ocean once again. Temperature forecast with that GFS 6 egg run doesn't quite get to 40 degrees, but it's certainly a very hot day on the 15th of July. Temperatures around 37, 38 degrees there, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You add a couple of degrees on, you're getting really, really close to uh, to 40. And over the channel, you see that the temperature being forecast around 43 or 44 degrees over northern parts of France. These are just absolutely extraordinary charts. Um, now, I suppose how hot it gets would depend on how quickly the thunderstorms break out and the cold front sweeps east will be GFS 6. There does have that heat even into 6 o'clock in the evening there across much of the east and the southeast. So, again... Um, you know, it, it's touch and go whether we breach 40 or not with that. But uh, by the time we get through the Saturday, the 16th of July, it's all over. The warmth is being swept away because it takes a while to get the heat out of the cities and whatnot down in the south. But um, the warmth is being swept away. Heat is being swept away by cooler air coming in from the north and the west. Wow, wow, wow. What an update this is. Uh, right, GEM looks like that with high pressure going regime from up the Atlantic on Friday, the 18th of July. If you enjoy this video, by the way, I appreciate some people probably going to be quite worried about what they're seeing here, but hopefully they're enjoying the information anyway, uh, and the presentation, if not, if not, you know, the message. Um, but if you are enjoying the video, please do like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, the GM has that high pressure in control of the weather over the weekend. will be main dry and warm or very warm. Then through next week, the high pressure needs to pull out to our west. And look at this, very different with the GM. Winds going into west, northwest, and there's no heat spike uh, on offer here. Actually, it's turning cooler and more, a little bit more showery for the second half of uh, next week. Look at the upper air temperature. It's the 15th of July. That's how the upper air temperature look with the GM. Far better for me, you know, because I don't want 25 Celsius isotherm. But um, very, 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 very much cooler compared to uh, the, the uh, GFS, where we go and go there, uh, on the 15th of July. That's how the GFS has the upper air temperature on the 15th of July. That's how the GM has them on the 15th of July. I reckon the GM is better. Let me know in the comments what you think. I would rather that the GM verifies, to be honest. I don't really want temperatures approaching 40 degrees. It's too much uh, for me. But uh, incredible contrast there between the two models. Uh, and then we've got the ECFWF as well. So no heat spike GM, with GM. GM says GM says no to, to, to excessive heat. Uh, we'll wait and see if it keeps standing its ground on that. ECM uh, finally has high pressure again reaching in from off the Atlantic. Brings loads of dry and warm weather with it over the weekend into next week. Not excessively hot, but very warm and plenty of sunshine as well. That ridge keeps going through into the middle part of next week. That's how the upper air temperatures look. We're in the 15 Celsius ice line, so I can get temperatures into the low 30 Celsius, probably, if there's enough sunshine. Notice the ECM is also really building up the heat across Spain and Portugal. That's where all this starts. North Africa, Spain, Portugal. And um, the heat is really building there with the ECM. Does it get it any further north? Let's see what happens. It keeps that ridge sitting over the country into the second half of next week. Again, the heat is there across Spain and Portugal. Um, not getting any further north up to day 10. We look like that. High pressure gain is maintained over the country. If we look at the upper air temperatures, the heat is beginning to push north. Plus 20 Celsius ice won't get into parts of France. So would the ECM go in the same direction as the GFS in a day or two, a day or two after that, um, over the weekend, 16th, 17th of July, we can't say. But certainly there's very extreme heat, but the ECM has very extreme heat into Spain and Portugal, and by day 10 it is starting to try and push it northwards. Beyond that, we can't really say where the ECM will go, because that's where we start.
Precipitation forecast based on that ECM run. Looks like this. Showery for a while in the north, but mainly dry down south. And then next week, lots of dry weather coming away from Scotland, where some further rain is likely at times. That's day 10. Dry across virtually all parts of the country. These will be up on the table within the ECM on summer day board day 10. That's the 15th of July from ECM to the IM team. 24 members of ECM on summers have high pressure over top of the country, mainly dry and very warm with that. And then we've got um, 20 with high pressure a little bit to our west and south. That's trying to introduce something a bit cooler from the northwest, maybe like what the GM was showing at that point. And then we've got seven. Uh, just here, which have the high pressure again right in over the top of the country. That's going to remain dry, very warm, possibly quite hot. Notice those seven uh, big low pressure off the coast of Portugal. That low pressure will be trying to push the heat uh, northern. What's going on there? That low pressure, do it again. Low pressure spell off the coast of Portugal will be trying to push that excessive heat northwards. Um, so that's not far away from like what GFS is doing, but only seven going that direction. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 20th of July. So 20 members of ECL and so on take that high pressure east. They uh, break the high to the east with below to the west. That will probably allow some very hot air to start pushing up from the south, actually. Uh, then we've also got uh, 19 here, look at this, uh, high pressure is like over Germany, Denmark, low countries, low pressure is out there. That again could start to allow some very hot air to come up from the south. So the ECM might be going in the same direction as the GFS here actually, or the ECM on south might be going in the same direction as the GFS here. The only difference, um, maybe doing it um, a couple of days later. Uh, and then we've got this, just here, 12 members of the ECM on south again with low pressure around the north and west Europe. So that's very different. That's much cooler, much more unsettled, but it is a minority. Uh, so I'm just going to go back here, actually. We're having a look at the ECM ensembles. Why not do that? This is an extensive video, but I think it's worth it, given the uh, scenario that we're into. So uh, that's how the ECM ensembles are looking for London. Again, same idea, red lines of 30 upper air temperature average. Starting off, not that excessively warm at the moment, but it will be warming up next week. Really, from like the 12th, 13th July onwards, that the uh, upper air temperature get hot, definitely, with the ECM that's around here, but we might bring up some quite hot air. And the ECM ensembles, you know, there are several ensemble members there that are getting those upper air temperatures, 220 degrees or more, uh, 850 HPA. So the ECM ensembles are sort of going in the same direction, actually, here as the GFS. Uh, I think so. Um, I wouldn't be that surprised if, like, we're doing it a couple of days later, though. Um, the GFS is going to be between around 15th and 17th of July, but I reckon the uh, ECM probably more towards the 17th to the 20th. Um, but in any case, I wouldn't be that surprised if we start seeing some very hot uh, operational ECM runs appearing in the next day or two. Will be something to keep an eye on. Right, just going to uh, have a look at the CFSB too, then we're done. Uh, it's been a long video. Thank you so much, everybody, for sticking with it. It's a very, very intriguing time, isn't it? Uh, so these are 500 mil of our high dollar bring down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 5th for it to be a length of July. The coming week has high pressure dominating over top of the country, mainly dry and very warm. Week two will be the 12th to the 18th of July. High pressure still in control, a little bit to our south. Nothing that excessive about that, I don't think, in terms of hot weather. Um, that's bringing in a little bit more of an Atlantic flow. So it will be very warm, especially in the south. Temperatures seem to be below 30s, but nothing all that extreme uh, with that. However, week three is the 19th to the 25th of July. Then the high pressure slips to the east, and that's the key. That's the key to getting the hot air up from the south. The way the wind rotates around the high pressure, means that when the high pressure is over to the west of the country, we'll bring wind in from the north. When the high pressure is over and to the east of the country, then we'll start bringing wind up from the south. That's the 19th, 25th of July. Week 3, it does look so the CFS could be going for quite hot weather. And then by the time it's through week 4, which is 26th of July, 1st of August, high pressure still there over Denmark, but it is weaker, weaker, probably some lower pressure around here, and maybe just going a little bit cooler, bringing the wind in a little bit more from off the Atlantic, but that's for which way, it's a long way off, and we've got a lot to worry about before we get to that. 
Right, we're done. If you enjoyed this video, then please don't you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gareth Mermaids. Get them to subscribe to me. We are grinding to 14k subscribers. And drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, everyone. Wow, wow, wow. 25 minute video. It's been a while since I've done one. Uh, that, that, that's that long. I hope you've enjoyed it. I appreciate people, there'll be a lot of people watching this and quite worried about what we're seeing here. I would say don't worry that much at this stage. It's still very exciting stuff. It's all beyond sort of day 10. Uh, so let's just wait and see. But while we keep seeing the GFS uh, and the GFS ensembles and also as you saw there, the ECM ensembles flirting, with this very excessive heat, um, sometime around like the 15th to the 20th of July, we have to consider it as a possibility and, um, you know, just keep an eye on it. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll keep you informed, uh, of course, over the uh, next few days here at Gow's Weathers. Well, you enjoy the rest of your uh, Tuesday. We'll be back tomorrow at 6 a.m. upload and 10 to 14 day at 2. So uh, you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, though. And for this one, though, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.